All right, so let's have a look at covalent molecular lattices. So we're actually looking at covalent molecules, but we're cooling them down to the point where they're a solid, so they make a lattice structure. This makes them really easy to compare against other types of bonding, which we can cool down to a solid. Um, so what is a covalent bond? Basically, you know that it's when atoms share electrons to make a complete outer shell. So they're making a complete octet by sharing electrons. However, um, that's not what the bond is. The bond is the fact that we are, you've got the positive nucleus here and another positive nucleus here, and they are attracted to the electrons in the middle. So there's this electron pair here which is being shared. This nucleus is attracted to it. This is attracted to, these electrons are attracted to it, but these electrons are also attracted to this nucleus, and this nucleus is attracted to that. And that's why covalent molecules are actually held together so tightly. Um, so basically what happens is two nonmetals, two nonmetal atoms are overlapping and their electrons form bonded pairs. And these are attracted to the nuclei of both atoms. So we can predict what's formed. Um, and basically it goes along with their group, same as everything else. Now boron is your group three element. And it's actually a little bit weird. It's a bit strange. Generally your group threes tend to be metals, um, but boron is the group three non-metal and it's weird. The reason it's weird is because it's such a small atom. It's so physically small that it can only fit three bonds around it. Whereas if you look at all the other ones, however many electrons or how many gaps they have in their outer shell, that's how many bonds they form. Okay, and that's really simple. That actually makes the job quite easy. Whereas boron is a weird one, it doesn't have the room, so it only forms three. So it looks like this. Here we have boron in the middle bonded to three chlorines. And you see this electron, this electron, this electron come with it. It still has, um, anyway, so that's, we'll leave that there. Boron, because it's so small, it can only fit three bonds around it. Carbon, on the other hand, and all group four elements are finally of a decent size. And group four elements have four electrons in their valence shell and four gaps. This means they will form four bonds. So if this is carbon, silicon, whatever, it needs to have four electrons being brought in or being shared to make a stable outer shell. Nitrogen, on the other hand, only has three gaps. So you can see we draw nitrogen here, one, two, three. There are three bonds, okay? But you've got this lone bonding pair Oh, sorry, lone pair or non-bonding pair. So this is a pair of electrons which are there, they're working together, they're part of the octet, but they're not bonded to anything else. So it's either a lone pair or a non-bonding pair. And you see here it is in nitrogen, or when nitrogen makes N2 gas, um, we can see that it makes three bonds with itself and it has two non-bonding pairs or lone pairs at the ends. Um, oxygen has two gaps, so it will form two bonds, which is why we have H2O. And you've got the two um, sets of non-bonding pairs right there. Um, chlorine has three non-bonding pairs and will form one bond because it only needs one electron to fill that outer shell. Um, neon, however, is a noble gas and will not bond with anything under normal circumstances. Extreme electricity, all good. Anyway, that's our bonding. Um, so let's look at the lattices. Basically, they're soft and they have a low melting point. There is only weak molecular forces between them. For example, we see here, this one is not joined molecularly to the ones around it. There is something called van der Waals forces, which make this structure there. Now, it's, it's a very predictable structure, but it is the structure. Um, they are insulators because there is no free charge to move. That's in all states. I hope that made sense. Uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below and we'll get back to you as quick as we can. Thanks for watching. Bye now.